So we will go back and we will make sure that we add our little minerals, right? We'll add them throughout. And we will also add our water. Now, you'll notice how there's a higher level, okay, in the first two sections of the large intestine. There's still water and minerals being absorbed out of the large intestine as we go to the descending colon or the descending large intestine, okay? But there's not as much. By then, all of... The, uh, the water and the minerals are mostly out of it, okay? And this is where feces starts to take shape. So what ends up happening here? What, do, what are you left with? Okay, so if we, uh, just to reiterate here, the, water, the minerals leave first. So minerals through diffusion, okay? Minerals are leaving into the bloodstream through diffusion, and water molecules are following through osmosis, right? Minerals through diffusion first, water through osmosis second. Now, what are you left with it from this soupy mixture that you first started out with? Now, what ends up happening here, the, the constituents of feces are First and foremost, that plant matter, the fiber that we cannot digest, okay? That kind of acts as a janitor and pushes along the feces, all right? It moves it along with peristalsis and the water. It, move, it keeps it nice and moist and it moves it along the digestive tract, okay? A lot of bacteria in your feces, um, a lot of bacteria that were living in the gut. Your small intestine and large intestine have a tremendous amount of bacteria in them. Good bacteria that you would not be able to survive without. Okay? A lot of dead bacteria gets shed through feces. All right? But there's also a lot of living bacteria in feces. Unabsorbed food stuff, okay, this could be stuff that you just didn't break down. Um, excess H2O and bilirubin. Now, the average lifespan of a red blood cell is about two weeks. So your body is constantly making new red blood cells. When we get to the circulatory system, we'll talk more in depth about blood cells. But your liver, and remember how we talked about the liver having many functions? Another one of the functions of the liver, in addition to making bile, is that it is also the place dead red blood cells, or red blood cells go to die, okay? Your liver is really good at making bilirubin. Bilirubin gets injected into the liver at the duodenum. It's one of the things that gives your poop that brown color. Because if you've ever looked at dried blood, okay, dead blood cells, you see that it, it, comes, it starts off as being very red, and then it gets kind of to a maroon color, and after a while it gets, gets that brownish appearance, okay? Um, so bilirubin adds to the color of your feces. That's not its sole reason. It's just a really easy way of your body to get rid of that stuff because it doesn't need it anymore, okay? So your feces... All of this, this stuff gets extracted, so minerals and H2O in the large intestine. When everything has been extracted from the feces, there's nothing left that the body wants. It makes its way from the large intestine to the rectum. The whole function of the rectum. The rectum is nothing more than a holding space for feces because you are constantly producing feces. We know that the digestive system is one long tube that starts in the mouth and ends at the anus. But you're not constantly releasing feces. That's not very functional. 
It's also, in today's society, kind of inappropriate. Okay? So the body, in order to maximize efficiency, has evolved to have this storage area called the rectum, where feces just goes, and the muscles around the actual rectum help compact and remove any excess gas. Okay, they, they help push and, and pack the actual area. And then when that area is full, a message is sent to the brain to say, oh, okay, rectum is full, you need to go to the bathroom. Peristalsis is also continuously pushing. So when you have that need to go poop, and it, it feels like the poop is, going to, is, is almost coming out when you really have to go really bad, that is peristalsis that's continuously pushing down on the feces, saying, all right, let's keep this train going, okay? So that message, though, that idea, if I asked you to describe the feeling of having to go poop, you'd probably have a hard time putting it into words, but you all can relate to that actual feeling. Okay? Another identifier that you need to empty your rectum is potentially gas. Farts, also known as flatulence. When the rectum is very full, you're not always able to go and relieve yourself whenever you need to relieve yourself. Okay? Um, and sometimes you will notice that when the rectum is full and you're putting off going to relieve yourself, you may pass or release small amounts of gas. And that is your rectum that's just trying to compact itself even more. It's trying to make more room. Okay? Farting or flatulence is a healthy thing because in your intestines large and small, bacteria are breaking down molecules. And sometimes carbon dioxide is produced. Sometimes methane is produced. Okay, these are all natural gases, and they got to go somewhere. And if this is a closed system, it's a closed tube, they're going to get pushed to the end of the tube. Some foods will cause you to produce more gas. In their breakdown, that bacteria is giving you more gas, okay? Things like beans and lentils in some people will cause people to have more flatulence, okay? Some people's flatulence doesn't smell good, all right? Whereas some people have flatulence and it doesn't smell bad, all right? There isn't a, a sulfurous smell attached to it. Okay? That depends, A, on what you eat, and it depends on the, the micro uh, flora in your gut. That means the, the makeup of the different bacteria. But flatulence is a very important part of digestion. So stopping yourself from farting, holding farts in, is not a good thing. Now, there's also, in today's society, an appropriate way to pass gas and an inappropriate way to pass one, right? So I'm not saying that, you know, when the need arises, just fart away, but to stop yourself from, from allowing flatulence to leave your body or, or gas to leave your body, that is not healthy. That is not a good practice. So once your body sends a message to your brain saying, okay, rectum is full, we got to empty this thing, and you will often find that the need to relieve yourself, okay, the need to um, defecate, which is the fancy word for pooping, comes after you've ingested food, okay? And that's simply because, again, it's a closed tube. If more stuff is coming in, stuff's going to have to leave. It's that simple. Okay? So when your body sends that message to your brain saying, hmm, the rectum is full, your brain will then decide whether you can go to the bathroom somewhere. 
you will make arrangements to get to a toilet, hopefully, or somewhere, and you will sit on the toilet for the most part, and you will use your abdominal muscles to push down on your rectum, and that's going to cause the anal sphincter, which is that circular muscle that's naturally closed, to open up. And it will open up and the abdominal muscles will also push down so that you can empty your rectum, okay? The anus is not a holding area. The rectum is, okay? Does that make sense?